you have here the list of what is uh, the most important here is that one the new parameter uh, introduced in the um, in the radar uh, <coughs> not only in the radar uh, parameters but also used in the radar equation to compute the radar range it's the pulse compression ratio by default it's one when it's one it doesn't change anything compared to what was computed before but if it's different from one then the new right range will be uh, the previous one here with uh, the pass compression ratio taken into account with uh, a power of one fourth uh, that will reduce the uh, the range according to the pass compression ratio this is that is quite important because uh, if you change that parameter or maybe I can do it with that uh, parameter here then you have other uh, a reduction or uh, compression uh, okay you cannot use <laughs> less than one two and so on. okay this is because the the signal uh, can be um, compressed and uncompressed so that the the uh, post processing is more efficient let's say it like that so for people that were not using that parameter before uh, by default it will come with one but uh, for the people that need to consider that pulse compression ratio, then they can do it. Instead of playing with the other parameters, it would be the same, but uh, it, it is more uh, friendly for, for that people. Um, my location, this is uh, coming here. So we have... Uh, Three menus: static, dynamic, or GPS. This is um, quite new. Um, my location: static. I, of course, it's not working here because uh, not on the right location. But uh, the the idea is to uh, either display um, the map around your real location or the location that has been uh, detected from your uh, computer or from the GPS. The priority is if we have a GPS, then we use the GPS either. Otherwise, we use uh, my location from the IP address and, and the, the standard features. So we display the, the map around the, my location, uh, either just uh, in a static way or in a, in a dynamic way. If your computer is moving, then for example, you're in a car, then the display will follow the, the path of your computer. It's also possible to move a station, a particular station to my location. Okay, you can show, move to my location. And if uh, loca the location is not found, because here, this is not where my computer is located, then you will get an error and nothing will happen. Something important related to propagation model. So, uh, if you remember regarding DIGU model, uh, we had uh, a, a first model called DIGU 94. Then this model has been modified, so we kept the the previous model as DIGU V1 and introduced DIGU V2. But unfortunately, Jigu V1 release is no more compatible with the new propagation engine that we have now. And Jigu V2 is now coming again, Jigu 94. Uh, anyway, according to the test we have made, uh, when people have, uh, users have performed calculations with uh, Jigu V1 in the former release, then they will get almost the same result, very small differences with the new DIGU 94. So if you have uh, some problems with people using V1, DIGU V1 in a former release, uh, you can tell them to use uh, DIGU 94 or DIGU V2. Uh, this is uh, for the, 
the next release, but uh, Digu V2 is, uh, is the same as that one. And we have uh, removed Digu V1 because so calculations made with Digu V1 in a new release uh, will provide more results. We, you can compute uh, um, coverage or profiles with a 1546 model with up to 90% on time. So we have a for the formula here is providing the way to translate the 90% from 50 and 10%. This is an ITU formula. Um, Sentiation model, I did. Network ID check frequency. Uh, so this feature here, network ID check frequency. In this feature, the ID is um, to be able to check uh, what are the possible frequencies that could be used by um, any network. Generally, uh, FM network is uh, is the main purpose here, but it could be for any other the kind of networks. So the idea is to check uh, if a frequency could be used by a new transmitter or some new transmitters, assuming that um, the, the existing network is providing um, the same, or part of the existing network is providing the same program, in fact. So we need to check if the program is interfered or not, not only stations, but also a program. On a given frequency, even if other frequencies are interfered that are providing the same program. It's not just like a, a check frequency, but check frequency by network ID, and the network ID is merging stations that are providing the same radio program or TV program. Okay. In that, this, this is not a new feature, it's quite an old one, but we have modified the way to consider how a point has to be defined as interfered. Either plus best server mode, it means that in that case, we consider that as soon as a frequency is received free from interference for a given program or for a given network ID, then no problem. And then the frequency can be used if you have no interference. Interference on best server, in that mode, we consider that the signal is always received from the best server. The program is received from the best server. So we need to check on a given program and on each point, of course, of the coverage, if the best server is interfered or not. And then, depending on the level of interference found, either on any server here or only on the best server here, if we have uh, quite a limited interfered area, or if it's quite huge, then the frequency can be used or not. And we check the frequencies from a minimum to a maximum with a given step. This is quite interesting when you're looking for, uh, for example, a new frequency for uh, an existing or a new site for FM networks. Coverage calculations are performed in remote simulation mode. Uh, if you remember, we have here, here, uh, DB station. Okay, when you use the remote simulation mode, where the tool will automatically open different sessions and compute coverage calculations for a sub part of the database. Um, currently, the, the number of sessions are limited by the number of cars that you have or licenses that you have. Now, if the process is run from a given session, the, the additional sessions are automatically open with an unlimited number. So you don't need to have uh, more cars or more licenses, but these cars or these licenses can be used only during the remote simulation process. Of course, you cannot open more uh, sessions to perform other calculations. You just you have unlimited number of sessions, but just for the calculation of 
the remote simulation uh, calculations. The idea here is uh, to um, to take advantage of the remote simulation feature, since now we have uh, more and more high resolution databases, and people are performing uh, coverage calculations over that. These are one to five million databases massively, and then they they will spend too much time in the in the, in the computing. So uh, if they are now unlimited, then we can tell them use that feature more easily. That action code is um, not that important, but the idea is, is to remind you that we have um, quite a lot of action codes now. I think you know how it how it works. All the idea is to, to run the tool from a common line. Okay, so you just need to, to send to the computer uh, an order. I can show you a, a remote. I think I have some. Uh, not remote, it's come online. Okay, for example, that one. Okay, so you just need to write down the file like that. So you say, you specify where the uh, exit is, it can be communication or warfare, where the project is, and then you have here um, arguments dedicated to the specific action code number. Here we have uh, 1023 with specific uh, uh, meaning, let's say. So you have a summary of the different action codes that are available right now. Um, so you can say, for example, that one. So when you perform that 1027 action code, then the the uh, the tool will open will open stations from an SQL database will be imported on the map, and our RSRQ map will be performed, and finally the results are exported to KMZ and GeoTIFF files. Okay, and same idea for the different action codes. Right. So the new one that has been added uh, is importing stations on a map from an SQL database. The SQL database needs to be predefined. Okay, means that you have to first open HTZ and link HTZ to a given SQL database, and the last database used will be considered automatically. So the stations are imported on the map. The composite coverage will be displayed, and the the coverage results will be exported automatically to TIFF, TFW file, where they uh, WMS uh, coordinate code, cartographic code, right? 